Hello, welcome to another hard surface practice session. Uh, in this session, we're going to be modeling a simple hourglass. Uh, it's going to be more of a timer than the, the old and fashioned uh, rounded type. So we're going to start off with the cube and we're going to just make uh, a base for the thing to see in. Just add in some loop cuts, extrude them in, and then we're just going to scale it on the Z axis just so that we can see those details a bit easier on the side. Selecting all the corner loops and we're going to give those a chamfer. Make sure clamps on so nothing overlaps and check for any uh, merged verts. Okay, next we're going to add uh, some sort of post for the corners to hold up the top part. So just adding another cube, scaling it down, excluding the z-axis. Uh, and next we are going to add some, we're going to add some loops so that we can precisely place uh, that post in a certain point on the corner. And we're just going to use shift z to exclude the z-axis so we can move it to that exact vert. We're going to boolean these objects together in a moment. going to fix up the ge geometry, makes it easier for if you're adding loop cuts down the line or if you want to add um, smaller details. Just going to get rid of all that mess on the bottom of the, of the stand. Uh, might just leave that as it is for now. Next we're going to mirror that across to the other four corners. Make sure to use bisect so that you don't end up with duplicate geometry sitting on top of each other. And we're just going to move these up. We're going to be using a mirror modifier on the z-axis uh, to basically duplicate it. So just add that on. Uh, if we adjust the origin point we can change the height of the thing as a whole. That looks about right. I'm not working massively to scale on this one. Um, just want to do the modeling part and uh, try and in, just try and get something done rather than start and stop and start and stop, which is quite common when you're trying to record videos. Again, just fixing up the geometry a little bit here. Just want to add some variation to these posts to make them look a little bit more interesting. I'm going to scale them in, excluding the z-axis, seems to be the theme for this video, uh, and then scale them a little bit on the z-axis just to change the angle of that part where it goes in. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. Um, a lot of the time I'll, I'll add edge loops just to measure a midpoint or a third point partway up something, just so that I can get a small detail I'm adding to be very precisely in that third or that half of something. So similar detail here to what I did on the base piece. Repeating details um, or echoing details is um, a good design principle in general. Um, it does tend to make things look like they're intentionally made that way. because the person who made the posts wouldn't have made the base part any different. Uh, next we're going to add in the uh, cylinder for what would be the um, the glass part of the hourglass. I suppose it's more of a timer than an hourglass, um, but it's just a matter of semantics, I think. That. Can apply all the transforms, recenter the origin point, uh, and then we need to work on the, um, the actual shape of the bit that makes the timer in the middle. Generally, uh, if you're adding loop cuts, it's a good idea to use even numbers. Uh, so if you're adding loop cuts or beveling, use even numbers. 
um, because if you do a low poly version it's easier to take out every other one which was a tip I learned from uh, watching Josh Gambrell videos of Blender Bros it's got some very good videos He's, um, you've probably if you've seen mine you've definitely seen his um, but yeah he's he's got some fantastic work up I regularly go back to watching their videos for inspiration for my own videos just of ideas of new things I can show you Gonna fix up the shading a little bit on this this hourglass. Yeah, that's about as good as it's gonna get, I think. Uh, just gonna fix up the top and the bottom parts. You can't see the very top and bottom anyway, because they're they're largely cut into the thing, uh, hidden within the. Um, stand itself. I think it's just a case of habit after time I just fix things because I know that it'd bug me if I had to do something with it later and the topology was wrong. Yeah it's looking pretty good sat in there. Uh, can I add another couple of um, Again, echoing that detail that's on the posts, you can do that again for the uh, bottom of the stand. And as I said before, I've confined that to the bottom third uh, using loop cuts to kind of measure it out where it is. Remember to mirror all that detail back up to the top as well. You can of course leave the mirror modifiers on but just out of habit I like to apply them and then carry on working so that I don't have to think about whether I'm messing up something somewhere else. Just going to add a bevel to this piece. Uh, there are a few cuts in this video, um, as you might have noticed. Uh, it's largely where I try modelling something, decide it doesn't work, and then um, decide to do it again, um, or do something completely different. But I think it's worth just cutting out all the boring parts because nobody wants to see me make a mistake and then hit undo 50 times. Unless, of course, it's something worth showing you that's Oh, if you mess up with this, this is how you'd fix it. I can do that as well. Uh, I do that in some videos. Uh, just trying to make this, this sort of wood panelling look to the base piece. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to make it wood yet. In fact, I've got, I think on this file, I've got a default material set up for some metal. So I'll probably just use that. Just because it's already set up with bevels and ambient occlusion and um, I think it's a procedural procedural brushed metal um, that's all set up ready to go. They're not hard to set up, the materials. But sometimes I just go in and uh, have a play around with it and see if I can make a, a material that I will use for many purposes. Just because it's quite fun to play around with them. Okay, next, uh, I'm going to change the look of these posts. And what I'm doing here, uh, I've separated one of the posts as a duplicate, um, insetting the face to get this middle portion and what I'm going to do is subdivide it a bunch of times and then we're going to separate that and use a twist modifier on it. Uh, twist is under simple deform if you've not used it before. Change it to the z-axis and you notice that I had to move the origin point to the very bottom loop of this this segment 
so not the not the rest of the post. Without the um, extra loop cuts in there, it wouldn't twist properly either. Um, it doesn't need to twist a lot for a piece like this. It just, but you'll see it. It's it's enough to give it some visual interest. Uh, I can mirror that across to all the other posts now. And just put shade auto smooth again. Uh, one thing to note, when I use the mirror modifier to put these other posts in, um, they they look obviously like reflections of each other and I don't want that. I want them all to look the same. So I'm just going to copy them across now. Uh, so what I've done is just select all the parts of that post uh, and one of it to use as a snapping anchor and then um, duplicate them across and snap them into place. It's going to remove all these edge loops. We don't need those. Okay, just a uh, slight shading issue here. If I just turn down the auto smooth, that fixes that. Uh, with the actual timer piece in the middle, um, I'm going to use a glass shader on this and I'm going to try something out. So I'm going to try having a duplicate um, inside it. So I'm going to duplicate the outer mesh and then scale it down inside itself and then flip flip the um, faces to see if I can get that thicker glass look because the glass shader on its own doesn't really do a great job of doing that um, in my opinion um, glass looks always looks very much like it's just a surface thing like a, almost like a bubble that the surface properties of a bubble where you get that sort of refracted rainbow color in it um, and that's not not what I want when I'm trying to make glass, I want it to actually look like it's got some thickness to it. So I'm just going to throw on that um, metal material that I made previously. Uh, it's a brushed metal, um, which I used mostly uh, a Ryan King procedural video to make, uh, and then just added in a few tweaks of my own. Like I've got a color correct node in there so that I can just change the um, the hue, the saturation, or the um, brightness as I see fit. Just makes it a lot easier to just change the whole thing in one go. Uh, just going to set up a glass shader for the part in the middle. And as you can see, it just looks too much like it's... You can't tell whether it's water, you can't tell whether it's a bubble, you can't tell whether it's glass, or or what is that made of. Is it cling film? So you just have to play around with the values and and see what you can do. But with with that extra layer inside it, it it will look more like glass. I think. Hoping it would anyway. Uh, just going to fiddle around with the values, see if I like anything different. Want to sort of yeah. To basically want it to look a little bit more yellow, like almost like an antique gold clock, but an antique gold timer. Uh, just going to fiddle around with that, see if the glass looks better in colour. No, nope, not really. Uh, take the brightness down a little bit, that makes it look... Yeah, and when you when you let it render a little bit you can see that second layer of glass in there, so I do think that works quite well. The refraction is supposed to handle that, but in it sometimes doesn't work very well, I find. Okay, so next, inside the actual timer piece, we need some sand uh, so that it actually works. And what I'm doing is I'm, I've duplicated the internal part of the glass from the timer. And then I'm just going to cut parts of it away uh, to make the sand and just make it out of that. Uh, I did have a few attempts at this already and forgot obvious things like the sand would be up one end of the top part and the other end of the bottom part and because I tried to do it with a mirror it was at the wrong end of both things because obviously gravity exists um, 
Again, I'm just fixing up the topology on the top and bottom. I want it to have some some rounding on there because I like the, the the way sand sits in the bottom of these little timers. It does look sort of rounded usually. Um, not following my own advice and not working from reference on this at all. I haven't looked up any images of these. I just started modeling it and hoping for the best, to be honest. So I've just separated this, this part. I'm just going to snap it down here, join it all back together and merge, merge by distance. And then I'm just going to reshape this to look this, this was the problem with the first attempt was the top and bottom parts looked identical. And obviously the top part is dropping sand and the bottom part is having sand land upon it. Um, and so it didn't look quite right. So they do look slightly different. Plus I forgot to account for the fact that the top part is going through the funnel. So it should really be this, the exact same shape. Uh, just going to throw on this sand material that I've set up. It's a very basic. Uh, it's got a high, high roughness of like 0 0.9 and then just a yellow colour. Um, just so it looks, just so it's not glass basically, because it was currently sharing the, the properties of the glass that I duplicated the faces from. Just trying to get that sand in the middle to be a thinner stream, even though the neck of the hourglass is quite thick. It usually looks quite fine that that bit that drops through. It's not vastly important. Like I said, I haven't modelled the whole thing to scale anyway. It's kind of just an, an ornament, or, uh, an ornamental version of one. It's possibly quite annoying that there's some things I bother about realism on, and some things I don't when I'm doing this. Um, I'm sure you'll you'll tell me if that's the case. Uh, so yeah, I'm just reshaping this bottom part now to hopefully make it look a bit more like the sand is landing on top like a little mound of the of the sand in the bottom of the thing kind of looks a little bit like an upside down wine glass with a with a thick thicker top part Gonna move some of these down to try and sort of reshape it into into place. I think the top should be slightly more raised up, very very mildly. Not sure it's very noticeable, but keeps me happy, I suppose. Okay, um, that's looking okay. Yeah, quite pleased with how this turned out. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.